was dedicated in 1997, and it's open until 5 p.m. We're going to go through some cast iron gates to take back to World War I. The emblems on the gates are the emblems of the four branches of the military and the Army and the Navy, the Coast Guard, and the Marine Corps. The Air Force is not dedicated branch of the military until 1947. At the top of the hill, the Custis Parkway. Custis Parkway stretches all throughout the cemetery. In just a moment, I have you look down the Custis Parkway on the path side the vehicle. Behind the walkway coming up, you will see two rows of grave markers. The last grave marker in the back row of the inside Arlington is my icon, Medgar Evers. He's a technical sergeant of World War II, participating in the Normandy invasion. He was the first field secretary in the NAACP in his home state of Mississippi, investigating hate crimes, including murder of Emmett Till, and that may have led to his assassination in June of 1963. He was buried here with full military honor. Now let's make the train coming up. Gonna have you look on both sides of the tram, and you'll see the seemingly endless row upon row of uniform grave markers stretching about oh, in all directions. Oh. They're provided oh, oh, for the mailmen, loved ones by the Veterans oh, Administration. Oh. They weigh 230 pounds and are made of huh? hard marble. Now, one of the famous military battles in history began on February 19th, 1945, the Battle of Iwo Jima. The Battle of Iwo Jima took place Iwo on a small island about 600 miles outside of Japan. Any Japanese Trump to go to Saw on that island, they had to face two obstacles when they got there. The first obstacle was the island itself, because Iwo Jima loosely translates as Sulfur Island, and the stench there was indeed unbearable. They also had to face some 20,000 Japanese troops that were entrenched on the island. The battle would take up five weeks, but in the first five days of the battle, the Marines would take the high ground. They would plant a small flag on the old volcano on the island known as Mount Sarabachi. The response to that was immediate and overwhelming. So much so that a larger flag had been placed on the volcano to show the world the Marines had taken the high ground. Six Marines were going to plant that flag, and along with them was an associated press photographer, Joe Rosenthal. He would snap that very iconic picture that you may have seen, one of the most famous pictures in all of history, earned your Rosenthal full surprise and became the vision and inspiration for the United States Marine Corps War Memorial, created by Village of the Weldon. Two of the flag races are laid to rest here at Arlington. Sergeant Michael Sprank in Section 12, Corporal Hayes in Section 34. Now come up on the driver's side will be Corporal Rene Gagnon, originally thought of to be one of the six flag races in Iwo Jima, but further research determined that he was not. But there may not have been a flag race at all. Had it not been for Corporal Nate Gagnon, he was the one who brought the flag to the six flag racers. His great part is going to appear on the driver's side in just a moment. And as a reminder, the United States Marine Corps War Memorial is outside the cemetery, so if you decide to get off at this location, you'll have a short walk to that memorial. A couple on the driver's side look for a black grave mark come up near a tree that has a has black lettering on it. I said a white grave mark has black lettering on it. And it has a plaque in the back for Corporal Rene Gagnon, the man who brought the flag to the Six Flag Race. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first stop on our tour, the Orton White Oak Gates that leads you to the United States Marine Corps War Memorial. If you are leaving us here, please watch your steps to do so. Make sure every ticket's out of the personal belongings with you, and enjoy the rest of your time at Arlington Cemetery. Thank you.